and welcome to the finance review yep. element of the GLM. Last time we pre-recorded this session to make sure that we didn't stumble on the facts and figures and create more confusion and so we've gone for that format again this time. However, in response to some comments by partners, we're going to leave a little bit more space at the end of the presentation to open it up for your questions and answers. We're going to start off with a very high level overview of the financial status of some of the logistics cluster operations and Bruno is going to kick us off with that. So over to you, Bruno. Let us start with a quick run through of the funding levels for the logistics cluster field operations. In this slide, you can see the funding levels obtained for 2020 divided by operation. These numbers include the carryover funds from the previous year. The slide shows this large disparity in the funding size between operations. This is due to a multitude of factors, such as the age of an operation, the type of humanitarian crisis, the outcomes of the gaps in needs assessment indicating the requirements of the sector, and of course the concept of operations which is describing the engagement of that operation. It is obvious that the operations providing services like transport or warehousing have a higher cost structure than operations focusing on coordination and information management. To put the financial data of the previous slide in perspective, this slide is showing you the number of partners relying on one of the services facilitated by the logistics cluster over the year 2020, whether these services are warehousing or transportation. This data is entirely based on the Relief Item Tracking application, or RETA, which is logging requests for any of these services across the operations. We are leaving you a second with this slide before moving on to the next. Moving from 2020 to the current year, on this slide we show you the funding aspirations for the ongoing operations. We indicate at the bottom the funding requirements per operation for the year. These funding requirements are based on the current concepts of operation. In the graphic visualization above, you can see in how far these funding requirements and these funding aspirations have been fulfilled, taking the numbers up until March 2021 into consideration. Please note that these also include the carryovers from 2020. Adding to the carryovers of 2020, we are happy to see that in countries like Nigeria, Ethiopia and South Sudan, our operations could already count on the unwavering support of the donor community. This support of the donor community and the evolution of that support is shown in this slide. We should highlight in this slide that since the last reporting at the GLM in October, the donor community granted no less than an additional 16 million US dollars to the operations of the logistics cluster around the globe, bringing the total contributions for the year to 61 million. As a final note on these slides, please note that the activities of the global logistics cluster and the resources required for those and obtained for those activities are included. And Athlete will now elaborate on these activities. And now we turn our attention to the financial status of some of the global activities and initiatives of the logistics cluster. As we mentioned last time, we see an increased appetite or interest from the logistics cluster partners in those activities and initiatives that are to the benefit of the whole community, impacting all operations and benefiting all partners, regardless of which country or countries they are operating in. And here we're referring to some of those projects and activities that many of you will be very familiar with, such as the preparedness project, capacity strengthening, the LCA updates, the work on the logistics operational guide, or the environmental sustainability project. You'll see, if you look at the circles in front of you, an increase over time between 2018 and 2021. The figure in the middle in the white circle is the overall aspirational request to donors for support. So we have in 2018, 4.5 million, increasing to 9.2 million in 2021. And just to highlight again that these are aspirational numbers and should we be able to receive these funds, we will be able to drive forward some of these 
significant global initiatives in support of the whole community. I'd like to make one final comment on the 2021 figure. Those of you who have eagle eyes will notice that at the last global meeting, we mentioned a figure of just over 11 million for 2021. We have re revised that down to 9.2 million to take into account the fact that several of those global initiatives were multi-year projects. And so we've now prorated it for 2021, which would bring us down to 9.2 million. And here in this slide, we take a much more detailed look at the actual expenditures of 2020 to underline that this is not the expenditure of the country logistics cluster operations, but this is the expenditure associated with the global level projects and activities, as well as the costs of the support team to the global logistics cluster. On the left hand side, you can see overall the expenditures 4.1 million. This is less than had been initially projected due in part to the impact of COVID-19 on the planned activities and uh, initiatives. However, we can still see that over 50%, over half of the expenditure was associated with the rollout and implementation of those global projects and initiatives in support of all partners, no matter which country they're operating in. So here we refer to the preparedness project, we refer to the range of training activities provided and we refer to the other strengthening activities such as the update of the logistics operational guide. On the left hand side we can see the breakdown of the costs of the support team which includes the support provided to field operations and global initiatives through the information management colleagues whether that be with a website or other activities from the desk operations team from the service provision service management team through the provision and support with, for example, RITA usage in country, and also the cross cutting uh, expenses related to finance, admin and management. On the right hand side, we can see the breakdown of the funding by source. So over 50% of the funding has come from donors. 33% has come from WFP core funding, what we refer to as the PSA and 18% of the costs were covered from the country operational budgets themselves. And now we come to the final slide in this very brief race through the financial update on the global logistics cluster. Here we're returning to 2021 and our aspirational needs of 9.2 million. As we mentioned earlier on, much of the shortfall that we currently have against this 9.2 million is connected to the implementation and rollout of some of those global initiatives which will be of benefit to all partners, regardless of where they're operating. And here we are referring again to the projects such as the preparedness project, the range of training activities that are provided to partners, the sustainable logistics project, updating the logistics capacity assessments, and updating and making relevant the logistics operational guide for all partners. We do still have a small but nonetheless critical gap in the funding for some of the core functions to the country operations. And while it's very early in 2021, we sincerely hope that in the coming months we will have good news and a positive uh, update on the funding status, both for the core activities and for these projects that we would really like to see rolling out as they are responding to the needs that you, the partner community, have raised. That's the end of the pre-recorded element of the financial update. I'm not sure if we did mitigate the stumbling, but we tried. And now we're going to turn across to a live questions and answer session. Thank you very much, uh, Ashley and Bruno. On, on video, but now there you are live. Um, because of the, of the, the, we have a few timing problems now because we do need to take a break, I think. So we haven't got any questions specifically on the finances yet, but if anyone does have any, please do still send them and we will try and get to them later. But I think it's important that everybody has a break. There are also some questions that came in on, in terms of digitization and um, some of those perhaps can be brought into our next session because after the break, we're going to hear from Professor Nademo from the University of Nairobi be business school uh, really fascinating on digitization and blockchain in particular so maybe some of those questions can be um, woven into that session so we're coming back at 1440 CET that's in um, 
16 minutes time. So just time to grab coffee, whatever, whatever, and then join, join us for, I think, a really, really great session. And thank you very much indeed to Bruno.